We all understand implicitly the concept of bad design. Whether it's a poorly conceived map, a confusing interface that drives away customers, or a complex report that fails to clearly convey its important information. All are examples of bad design. All exhibit poor layout, terrible color schemes, and a general lack of clarity around the information presented. While we understand when a design is inadequate, it's difficult to quantify what makes a design acceptable. We often ask ourselves this question, what should we consider when producing similar information products or interfaces? This is where Google's material design can help. Material design is Google's visual language, communicating classical principles of good design. It's a language it's a language easily understood and while not revolutionary, it does make these concepts extremely accessible to those with no formal training in UX. Google created these guidelines to support Android developers. However, its scope is much wider than just mobile development. The guidelines are formulated and driven by two complementary goals. Good design is the most important consideration and the main goal. As this design is focused and applicable to technology, it must be open to innovation, scientific or otherwise, in this space. The second goal is this. A similar experience must be achieved when accessing the design through browser, mobile or tablet devices. The design must always present with a uniform and consistent interface. In other words, the design must not be substantially different or compromised due to the platform or device of the connecting user. Three key principles allow these goals to be realized. Firstly, material is the metaphor. The virtual design copies that of the physical world, particularly tactile reality, surfaces we, we touch. For instance, the background of an application resembles the flat, opaque texture of a sheet of paper and applications behave and mimics the paper's ability to be resized, shuffled and bound together in multiple sheets. Using these physical concepts of paper, a user can quickly understand, master and predict how the interface works. Bold, graphic and intentional is more than just creating an interface or an information product that's visually compelling. It's about the deliberate use of display hierarchy to convey meaning and focus. What's the most important aspect of the design to draw the user's attention to? This should be the guiding principle that shapes the layout of each display. Lastly, motion provides meaning. The user interacts with the interface and movement occurs. This movement reinforces the concept the user is in control. Primary user actions are seen as inflection points that initiate motion transforming the whole design. Objects are presented to the user without breaking the continuity of experience, even as they transform and reorganize. Let's take a brief look at the online documentation and examine how these principles are explained. In these guidelines, Google presents a number of design concepts supported by either images or short videos, reinforcing the articulated concept. Looking at material properties, we find that the height and weight of material can vary. Material cast shadows. Shadows depict um, relative elevation between material elements. And it goes on, a series of do's and don'ts of design. Shadows are never approximated by colouring material. Material can display any shape and colour, etc. Under styles, we have bold colours. Imagery or graphics is at the heart of the displayed content.
There is intention behind the language used on displays. Clear, accurate and concise text makes interfaces more usable. For instance, speak to the user as you, don't refer to we. For developers, there's a whole section on different UI components. Even going down to individual measurements around positioning and spacing. I recommend anyone who's interested to spend a considerable amount of time exploring these guidelines. A wealth of information is available. At ESRI Australia, our professional services team are embracing these concepts and building a design framework to support project implementation activities. For the next part of the presentation, we'll look at, the pro at a prototype widget that uses our design framework. The widget's purpose is to generate a report. It does this by calling out to our geo reporting framework, another component we sometimes use for reports delivered to customers. Firstly, we need to create an application. Just use the default template and we'll call the application Material Design. I'll just go ahead and set up some standard application properties. Okay, this is the interesting part. Time to configure our geo report widget. It's important when designing a component that extends another system, the component doesn't deviate drastically from the design paradigms in use. In this example, we've kept the same configuration screen for our widget as all others. URL to our geo reporting server. As you can see, we've tried to incorporate aspects of material design into its layout and function. It's a work in progress. The material design guidelines are clear and concise, but still challenging to implement against. Notice the responsiveness of the design as I move through the various previews. Okay, time to launch our application. Now I'm interested in finding out what points of interest are found around us here at Osri. I'll search for the address of, of the Sofitel Melbourne. As I open up our report widget, you'll notice on the front screen um, it dynamically loads all available reports from the configured report server with a preview image. Clicking on that report, it brings in all the default configuration. The distance in this case represents meters from the search address. As these are places I'll be walking to and I'm generally lazy, let's make the distance smaller.
and generate our report. As expected, we have a report with information on the points of interest around the location indicated. Notice how the material design concept is transferable to print templates as well. The same concepts applied to the interface have been applied to the generated report. The focus of the re report is on the name of the place and not the address. After we find a specific point of interest, say the exhibition centre, we are then interested in knowing its address, which is across on the right. So, very briefly, here are the major components our ESRI Australia design framework uses. Our design philosophy is underpinned by material design. As more customer projects use this framework, more capability aligning with the guidelines will be developed into the framework. ArcGIS for JavaScript API is the key library for web mapping solutions and provides access to the rest of the platform. MVC is a robust pattern of separating logic concerns from data and presentation. Using this approach keeps code more manageable, especially as complexity increases. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. It brings static type checking to developed applications and greatly simplifies the process of refactoring extending JavaScript code. Visual Studio Code is a clever, free IDE produced by Microsoft provides great support for TypeScript development. With Node.js, it's possible to develop server-side code in JavaScript. Our approach is to, to simplify system development by creating solutions using a single language. And finally, Require.js is our asynchronous module loader of choice. It promotes just-in-time dependency loading of modules and keeps our framework's footprint light. We're excited about the possibility this design framework offers our internal teams and it will allow us to create compelling and consistent solutions for our customers. So just wrapping up, good design is important for maps, user interfaces and information products. Google's material design encapsulates quality design principles which are comprehensively covered in the guidelines. Extending the ArcGIS platform using material design is possible. Recapping our solution mix for this session, we focused on Web App Builder for ArcGIS Developer Edition. Our own homegrown frameworks used by our professional services teams. Data displayed were points of interest for Victoria and our main focus was the online Google Material Design Guidelines. I'm available on LinkedIn and always keen to connect with our customers. Recommend you avail yourselves of our own good online resources highlighted in the slide. Thank you.